Welcome back students, Mr. McCoy here. Today we're going to be talking about random numbers and how to generate random numbers in particular ranges. So what is a random number in computer terms? Uh, because computers really aren't capable of generating things randomly. Everything uh, the computer does is in some kind of a sequence or through some kind of program, an algorithm of some kind. So just telling the computer to think of a random number between 1 and 100 doesn't make any sense because the computer doesn't really think at all. So there is a, uh, a class that's been written for Java which uh, gives the illusion of random numbers. It's also known as pseudo-random or fake random in that uh, for our purposes we can't tell the difference because we can't spot any kind of uh, order or sequence to the numbers that are being generated so they feel random enough to us that we can call them random numbers. One way they sometimes do this in computers is to uh, look at the system clock at the time that you requested the random number and do some kind of mathematical uh, operation based on the very second that you requested it so uh, whenever you try it again I mean, it, it'll give you a different number, and so it feels random, even though it's somewhat based on the clock. So that's one of the strategies that they use. I'm not sure if that's what they're using in Java's random class. So how are we going to make random numbers? Well, we're going to use that random class, and you'll see a line of code that looks a whole lot like our scanner uh, instantiation, where we said uh, scanner console equals new scanner. Well now we say random random gen equals new random. Random being the class and random gen being a name that we're you know giving to our object. You can name this whatever you want. Just like uh, console could be called the keyboard or whatever whatever you want to throw in there. You want to call it Fred, you can call it Fred. You can call our random number generator Fred if you want, but that wouldn't make a lot of sense. But then, after we've created that object, then we can get random numbers from it just like you would from the keyboard console. It even has the same method call, next int. So we create our random gen object, and then we can say random gen dot next int, and it'll get an integer for us that feels pretty random. And we will actually put a number inside of the parentheses this time, because that's how we tell Java what kind of range we're interested in. So let me throw out some vocab words here. Next int is a method. So we're going to call the method. By running it, we're calling it. And in this case, we're going to pass in a parameter of 10. So I'm going to take this 10, I'm sending it to the next int method. I'm saying, hey, next int method, give me a number using this 10. As, you, as a parameter. Then what the next int method is going to do is it's going to return a number back to me that feels random. And it uses that 10 to help set an upper bound. So it's actually going to give me a random number between 0 and 10 non-inclusive. So it doesn't include the 10. So it's actually going to give me a 0 through 9. It could give me a 0 or it could give me a 9 but it won't give me a 10. It doesn't include that upper bound. If you want to get a random number from 1 to 10, you'd have to call random gen next int 11. So that would give you the possibility of returning a 10. So just keep in mind, whatever number you pass in here isn't actually possible to get back as a random value. So how could we create a random number within a range? What if you wanted to get a random number uh, from 2 to 11? We actually did this in the blackjack game. Whenever we wanted a card, lowest card being a 2 and the highest card being an ace, which counted as 11, we wanted a random number between 2 and 11. But if you did this call, next int 12, that doesn't quite get you what you want, because this will give you a random number between 0 and 11. We only wanted 2 to 11. So this isn't going to work for us. What if it gives us a 0 or a 1? That's not what we asked for. So this is where we just need to use our brains a little bit and figure out how we can use math to get the result that we want. 
So if our desired range is 2 through 11, then we can see that the span, I should use the word span here, we can see that the span of those numbers is 9. The largest number minus the smallest number gives me a span of 9 possible numbers. So if I want to get a span of 9 numbers, then I could use this next int 10. That would give me 0 through 9, right? But that 0 through 9, while the span is correct, the range needs to be shifted a little bit. So to ensure that the number is between 2 and 11 rather than 0 and 9, we can just add 2 onto the end of it. Next int 10 gives us a random number 0 to 9. Whatever that number is, if we add 2 to it, then we shift our range a little bit. So if the random number return is the smallest value of 0, then we could add 2 and we get 2, the smallest possible that we wanted. And if we get the maximum number on this, which is 9, we shift by 2, add 2 onto it, and you get 11. So no matter what number we get in this next int 10, if we just shift it up by 2, then it's guaranteed to fall within our range. So let's do some practice. How can we generate a random number from 1 to 100? Well, the first thing we need to ask ourselves is what parameter should we pass into the next int method call? And so we need to figure out what our span is. We have uh, from 1 to 100, so if we subtract those, 100 minus 1, we get a span of 99 numbers. So we want to be able to get from 0 to 99, which means that we need an upper bound of 100. So we have to, whatever this number is, we just add 1 onto it, and that gives us what number should go in our parameter. Because this would give us a range of the lowest possible number that would be a 0, and the highest possible number that this could give us would be a 99. So how far off are we from where we want it to be? How much do we need to shift? We have 0 to 99, and we want that to shift to 1 to 100, which means we need to add 1. So if we add 1 to that range, you see how we get to where we want it to be. So how much do we need to shift? We need to shift by positive 1. So there we go. If we do randomgen.nextint100 plus 1, that's going to give us our random number from 1 to 100. On the next slide, you can see that process written out. Problem two, let's try this again with a more complicated range. All right, let's get a random number uh, from 42 to 60. Let's start off by figuring out what our span is. 60 minus 42 gives us 18. Okay, so we want to be able to get a number from 0 to 18. So what's our upper bound? Well, we need to go up by 1 to get that upper bound, and that would be 19. So if we did next int 19, it'll give us a 0 to 18. Now we want that to shift. We don't want 0 to 18. We actually want 42 to 60. So what do I need to add onto here to both of those to get there? 0 plus 42 gives me 42. 18 plus 42 gives me 60. So I need to shift by a positive 42. And on the next slide, you can see that explanation. Last example, slightly more complicated. How do we generate a random number from negative 15 to positive 15? So let's figure out our span. 15, the bigger number, minus negative 15. 15 minus negative 15 is a span of 30. And remember, you want to add 1 to get the proper upper bound, 31. So this 
next int 31 is going to give us a number between 0 and 30. And we want to shift that to a negative 15 and positive 15. So, what do I need to add onto 0 to get us to negative 15? I need to add negative 15. What do I need to add onto 30 to get us to a positive 15? I need to add a negative 15. So how much should I shift? I need to shift down by 15. And so you could do this as plus negative 15 or you could just write minus 15 as you'll see on the next slide that has our solution. 31 would be our parameter and then we need to shift down 15. All right, so it's worth noting that whenever you call something like this, random gen dot next int 10 plus 2, what actually happens is it grabs a random number that gets returned, it adds 2 to it, but then we haven't done anything with that answer. It doesn't even print it to the screen unless we ask it to do that. So we could do something like system.out.print and then print the entire number, or you could store that number into a variable as is demonstrated here. Whenever you get that return value, you actually need to store it into something if you want to be able to use it later on. Looking at this example real fast, you can see that uh, we have a for loop here that's going to print num. And what is num? Well, num is a random number between uh, with an upper bound of 10, so it's 0 through 9 are our possible random numbers. So the computer's going to grab a random number, say 8, store it into num, and then we run this for loop, and the for loop's going to run a couple times, uh, and every time it runs, it prints 8. It doesn't print a new random number each time. It just prints whatever is inside of num. So this only occurred once. Stored it into num, and then we're printing num over and over again. If you want this for loop to print a new random number every time, then you need to include this code inside the for loop. That would be how you do it. Get a new random number every single time and then print that number. Next time you run the for loop, get a new random number and print it. Get a new random number and print it. So it's up to you. Every time you need a new random number, ensure that you make a, a new call to get the next integer from the random gen class. Let's take a look at some of the practice problems for this lab set. All right, here we are in BlueJ. Let's take a look. Get an integer from the keyboard and print all the factors in that number. In that number? Of that number. What do you think? Let's go with of that number. Factors of that number. Example, using the number 24, the factors of 24, so these are all the numbers that evenly go into 24. So first we need to prompt the user. And let's get their input. Hint, uh, just go with num. Okay, now we need to find all the factors of that number. How could I determine the factors of a number? So let's, let's assume they're going to type in 24. So I need to look at all the numbers from 1 to 24 and see if it's evenly divisible, or if that number will go into 24. If 24 is evenly divisible by each of the numbers from 1 to 24. So this sounds like a for loop. I'm going to start looking at my lowest possible number, I'm going to look to see if 1 goes into evenly. I kind of know it's going to, but let's start there. Let's keep going as long as i is less than or equal to 24. No. No. Because we don't actually know that they typed in 24. So we want our for loop to run up until we hit that number, whatever number they typed in. And we want i to go up by 1 each time, because we're going to consider all possible integers. So as we're going through our for loop, I want to check if, if I take my number and I mod it by i, that's my current looping variable, 
then will I get zero? Will I have a remainder? Or in other words, does I go into num evenly? If it does, then let's print it. And then let's put a space after it. Okay, how's that look? Let's compile. It's happy. Let's run it. Enter an integer. 24. All right, and look at that. Those are the numbers, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, 24. Okay, it's not the output. Uh, it's not formatted the way we wanted to. We don't want to have a print line there, and we want to have a header. Before we start printing those off, we want to say system.out.println factors of concatenate on our num compile let's see if this is cleaner looking 24 oh, shouldn't be a print line and then also whenever I'm done with all this I'm going to want to go to a new line I'm not forgetting that this time compile run 24 okay so those are all the factors of 24. Let me try it again. Let's try uh, 30. What are all the factors of 30? Yep. All of those numbers go into 30 evenly. Okay, cool. So that works. Number two. Now we bring in some random numbers. Write a new version of problem one that gets a random number between 10 and 20 instead of asking the user to provide the number. Okay, so number two is going to be very similar what we just typed. Let's just steal the entire thing. All right, but this section where we ask the user to enter a num enter an integer, we're not going to prompt them anymore. Instead, we're going to get a random number. In order to get a random number, we first need to include this object instantiation line so that we can get our random generator. I'll just put that up here at the top. Random random gen equals new random. So now I can make a call to random gen dot next int. So instead of getting next integer from the console, I'm going to get next int from our random gen object. And now I need to set this up. Uh, I wanted a random number between 10 and 20. So what is the span? 20 minus 10 is 10, and then go up by 1, 11. This will give me a random number with 0 being the lowest possible number and 10 being the highest possible number. So 0 to 10 is 10 shy of where I needed to be. So I need to shift this up by 10, and now I should get a random number between 10 and 20. All right, variable num is already defined, so I declared num up here. I can use num again, I just can't declare it again. That's what happens when you copy-paste. Run, enter an integer, uh, let's do 5. So it figured out the uh, factors of 5 are 1 and 5, and then it picked a random number between 10 and 20, picked 17, and it found its factors. Let's try it again, see a new random number. This time it picked 14, and those are 14's factors. So that's cool. All right, moving on with this uh, lab set, there's some other mathy type stuff. And then you do a whole lot more random number generation in your Lucky Dice app. So have fun. Enjoying my class? Smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and follow me on Twitface. But hey, that's just a tutorial. A computer science tutorial. Thanks for watching.